sometimes when you have a glimmer of inspiration, you just have to go for it and not look back. The phone is off. I'm I'm lying to you. It's 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 all an illusion. <laughs> but no, seriously, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Whether you're from my TikTok, Instagram, real life, thank you for being here. My name is Bobby Mills, and I just completed five years of daily drawing and art and creativity and just everything. And I legitimately have no idea how to do a video like this. I've done the like year wrap up stuff before. I've done a three year milestone video. I don't know why five years feels different, but it just does. It's just like a nice clean five and it is more time. So, and you know, but yeah, I, I have been trying so hard to like figure out how to condense like five years of like daily art and drawing and creativity into like one cohesive, hopefully entertaining video. Uh, that can be watched and i think this is the best we're gonna get because <laughs> it's really impossible to put everything in my mind into a video otherwise we'll be here for five years that being said i think the best way to go about this is ironically breaking it down into five parts there could be many parts but for video sake and continuity um we'll stick with five and those should be on the screen right now. Hopefully editing me, future me. <laughs> Please figure out how to add chapters and the timestamps that like we can like skip through if you want to hear about a certain part. Um, thank you. <laughs> so with that being said, I think the most logical thing to do would be to start at the beginning. So the who, what, where, when, and why of this all. I started this daily drawing challenge January 1st, 2017. In my senior year of high school, and at the time, um, I didn't announce that this was a daily drawing challenge. I just kind of started drawing. And the reason why I did not announce it as an official challenge kind of leads into why I started it in the first place. And that reason, a very selfish reason, not to like get better at art or anything like that. It was to prove myself wrong. You see, up until this point, I had uh, been painfully inconsistent when it came to like my dreams, my passions, all this kind of stuff, or what I thought were my dreams and my passions, constantly letting myself down on the projects that I would do. My first venture into uh, the internet in terms of content creation was back in 2012. Very few people, unless you're like a closer friend of mine, know that I had like a little bit of a gaming uh, YouTube channel, didn't go anywhere. Uh, super, super, super small, like in the tens of subscribers, but yet it meant a lot to me. Uh, and I thought I wanted to be a gaming YouTuber. And so I would set a schedule, wouldn't hit it. I would say I was gonna record a video, didn't record it. Uh, said I was gonna do this, didn't do it. Time after time after time of doing that, I'm like, I became really frustrated and that it sounds dumb, but really messed with my confidence. And so going back to my daily drawing challenge, I wanted to prove myself wrong and that I could do something consistently for an extended period of time. And in my mind, that time was a week, a couple days. In my mind, if I could get to a week, I win. And so I just started drawing like anything. Um, people have asked me in the past if I do a new drawing every single day or if I just have to draw something every single day and the answer to that is yes. <laughs> uh, it has been both of those things. Right now uh, as I'm more confident in my stuff I try to do something new every single day but in the past in the initial startup of this challenge it was just about the act of drawing every single day. And st and even then, in the first couple days, I did something unique every single day, which to me, again, was a little cherry on top of like, okay, this is wild. And by the time I hit those like couple day milestones <laughs> or week milestone, I was kind of speechless. Here I was doing something consistently and not, not doing it. <laughs> if that makes sense. That is why I, especially in the early days, valued consistency uh, above all else because it was kind of a shock to, to, to my brain. It was like, oh, okay, so, so we can do this a little bit. At the time, I couldn't have predicted I would be sitting here in front of a camera talking about how I, how I did this for five years, but still. Consistency meant a lot to me then, and it still means a lot to me now. 
So moving on to the actual thing itself that I do, the actual art. I feel like that only makes sense as the next thing because it's the bulk of what I've been doing for the past five years straight. In 2017, my style started as random, messy, scribbly ballpoint pen stuff. And it was really cool because that was like the only thing that I used. I was obsessed with ballpoint pen. I loved all the messy, scribbly details. Um, I still love uh, seeing. I still love seeing artists do weird, messy uh, stuff. Is there's so much energy that's just jam packed in raw line work. Uh, that's just fascinating. Uh, and I discovered many sides to the ballpoint pen that I didn't know existed. Like if you layer it on thick enough and then kind of smear it, you can get shading and gradient really smoothly and really easily. And if it's a normal ballpoint pen, which has a little bit of blue ink in there, it can have a bit of color to it because most uh, ballpoint pens aren't just like black ink. There's some other stuff in there. And I spent the majority of <laughs> my uh, later high school art classes kind of being known as the pen guy. People would see the ballpoint pen and like, oh yeah, that's the person that only draws in ballpoint pen, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Um, did the final AP stuff in ballpoint pen. I don't think that the AP judges when you sent it off, we liked it very much, but you know, eh, fuck them. <laughs> no, but seriously, it was really cool. Uh, then the next major style came when I got into college and was kind of introduced to digital for the first real time. I've done it before, prior to high school in a summer art class that was really cool, but nothing like learn, sit down, learn a technique, practice this. This is how you use it. Uh, studies, anatomy, shading, lighting, environment, whatever. And so that kind of made something click in my mind. And the first real digital style that I kind of did consistently for a long time was matte painting, actually. Um, if you go back far enough in my, in my feed, you will find me doing a ton of landscapes, fantasy, matte paints, and just getting lost in worlds and realms that I would love to visit one day. Although if they have monsters and, 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 and it's a true fantasy world, I, I don't know about that. It was really cool because here I was going from like messy scribbles, focusing on like a face or something to like an entire world. Uh, and it quite literally, pun intended, opened a world of possibilities. And then from there, I kind of regained my love for faces and portraits and started doing messy tracing, bringing back the uh, scribbly styles into my portraits and learning how to make it all weird was pretty cool. And then that portrait style kind of evolved into more of like a semi-real portrait style, taking <laughs> just like images from like Unsplash and uh, Pixabay and all those other free sites and using it to kind of trace over and do kind of like I'm not gonna say like it's not cell shading but it's like very blocky punchy color portraits that was really really cool for a while there's a lot of amazing portraits in that uh period of time and then from those portraits came uh the kind of mixed media photography fashion overlay stuff that i fell in love with I loved mixing reality with like this kind of cartoony aesthetic. And to be honest, it was really cool because it was like one of the first times that I was like, this could be something like it definitely feels like it would fit like a social media feed. Uh, people seem to like it. Um, it's interesting and unique, although very heavily inspired from Donna, Donna, Adi, 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 Adi. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and through using photos, I was kind of able to connect with uh, a couple of photographers, because I always try to tag them uh, in their own work, of course. A couple of them saw it and then are like, yo, this is really, really sick. And that led into really cool projects, uh, collaborating with photographers that I've never even met. <laughs> uh, but at some point during this process, I was like, this is really cool, but it's one, getting kind of monotonous and it's just the same stuff over and over and over again. And I'm kind of, in a way, just relying on finding cool photos on the internet. 
when I'm my own individual artist and I want to develop my voice, I can't constantly be doing that if I rely on on other people's work. And so then that desire led me into uh, the next style. I guess you could say uh, it's really just a mashup of a couple different things. By the way, it's New Year's Eve as I'm recording this. Anyways, the next style that I kind of got sucked into or styles was a mix of like weird trippy mandala but all that kind of stuff mixed with typography and different phrases and at first i was like yo this is really sick even the type you know day in day out got a little bit monotonous because i was just trying to think of words and phrases that i thought would be catchy and funny um so i kind of fell into that same mindset of like okay well this is relatable but it's not really unique and then that frustration kind of led into where we're at now with my current cartoony character design stuff and if you're from my tiktok and social media currently as i'm recording this and uploading this this is the main style that i'm doing right now and that's what you're probably going to recognize the most and so this started again out of frustration i was it was one of those 3 a.m. doodle sessions where I can't sleep, but I feel like everything is going on in my head a thousand miles a second or a thousand miles an hour. And I looked up and it's out of frame, but I have a regular show poster and I just wanted to draw one of them. And so technically what started my cartoony style, Benson, it should be up on screen as well, but I'm holding it up too. Um, I still fucking love this. <laughs> then I found a TikTok challenge, uh, trying to make the most disproportionate face that you can. And that was really fun to me. And then I just started messing around with a little bit more characters. At first I was, the hell is this? Um, this is so not my style, but then again, I've switched styles so much. So what is mine? But then that slowly started to grow on me. And I'm like, this is actually really cool. This is that like uniqueness that I was looking for. Like this, I would not have dreamed of doing. Um, in a million years just because it's so strange but then again what isn't strange that's kind of where we're at right now and i'm sure i could break it down so much more but we only have so much time in the video so gotta condense it somehow again i wish i could talk for five years on this but like i <laughs> i can't nor would i have the energy to and nor would i want to have anyone be forced to listen to me for that long so no oh well and uh speaking of now <laughs> um i feel like this video would be incomplete uh, or lacking somewhat if I didn't talk about what has been happening for the past two of these five years, which is social media and content creation and all this kind of stuff. When I started off, I started on Instagram. I will always have a love for Instagram, but like, let's be honest, in 2021, almost 2022, it's so frustrating. It's so, it's so fucking frustrating. The algorithm feels dead. The algorithm feels like non-existent. Um, I've been static for <laughs> a long time on Instagram, although I probably should start reels pretty soon. Uh, maybe that's a New Year's resolution that I probably won't keep. Anyways, however, stuff really started to change and, and, and get moving when I stumbled upon a little underground app called it. Of course, that's sarcasm then and now, because you know it's it was started back in 2017. Ironically, I really didn't know about it um, until I started hearing like influencers start to talk about it, um, like Gary V, claiming that it was like, if you aren't on TikTok right now, you are making the biggest mistake ever. Um, and I was skeptical at first, because here I am like, okay, well this isn't really for art, but like, eh. And one November night after I posted my daily drawing challenge, I'm like posted a, a photo of the drawing that I did at the time, which was one of those fashion overlay things with a photo filter animation and some music that was maybe trending. I don't think it was even trending. <laughs> I just found an interesting sound uh, and used it and set my phone down for an hour, picked it back up and then opened the app again and it had like 500 views excuse me, which was at the time absurd. Uh, here I am coming from Instagram and Facebook, only used to like a handful of views and likes and impressions, you know, maybe max a hundred. 
uh, and just over uh, practically within an hour, just 500 views. That kind of opened my eyes and I'm like, okay, this, this is definitely a thing. There's so much just raw attention on TikTok that I have to kind of like start doing a little bit with it. And then that little bit became a lot, you know, hit a couple hundred followers just from posting that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I surpassed my Instagram following at some point, which was mind blowing. It was like, I've been on it for like a couple months. And so then I started taking it a little bit more seriously. And now we are sitting here at roughly, I think, 39.1 thousand followers on TikTok. <laughs> Which, flashback to the first venture onto the internet, 2012 version of me, that was like my dream. To have that amount of an audience listening to what I do. So, thank you, um, <laughs> everyone from TikTok. But yeah, TikTok has taught me a lot about content creation, about video, about weirdly myself, like a lot. Uh, prior to TikTok, I was never one to really show my face that much uh, or really show the artist behind the art as much, if at all, just because I wanted my art to be the thing. But here we are now. And it was a little bit of a bumpy ride to like get myself used to putting my face out there and fully owning that kind of stuff. But there, it was it's just such huge growth uh, personality wise as well. That shy back of the class art kid has been kind of totally obliterated. And honestly, I don't miss him. I don't miss him at all. Self-confidence wise, art confidence, just being more of myself with my art because my art is me. Uh, and so, yeah, that's really cool. And so, segue, reflecting on what I have learned in the past five years of daily drawing and art and content, a lot. <laughs> I don't know how to like put everything into one cohesive thing again, because honestly, there's so much technical skills. Uh, I have improved on a lot, of course. Um, that's to be expected with grinding daily from scribbles to advanced scribbles. <laughs> uh, ironically, like I start every single character doodle with a scribble and I started my daily drawing challenge with scribbles. So it's all in a way kind of come full circle. I could spend another five years talking about the technical side of things, the physical techniques that I've learned. I could do a video like that, but I think the main things that I have learned are up here. <laughs> the main lessons that I've learned, the things that I've overcome are mental. Moving yourself to like do something every single day that is what you love is a really, really, really powerful thing. I have learned so much about myself, like I just mentioned, content creation, but also through the act of drawing every single day. I think the biggest thing that I've kind of solidified in the past five years, mindset wise, is this is correct. I am an artist and this is my thing. Y you know, there's the common sentiment, phrase, idea that you have to love what you do because otherwise it's, it's going to be really fucking difficult at best. Uh, to do anything consistently. And I think I found that. Because, you know, this has not been easy uh, in the slightest. I think this is the thing for me that I could do through the ups, the downs, the roller coasters, the loops, the left turn, the right turn, the, the low, the high. I've been an artist all my life. I've been drawing all my life. It's like been a thing that I loved. But I think now I can confidently say I, I am an artist. I am this thing. I am a creator. I'm a creative. This is my thing. Uh, and that feels really fucking good. I, I, I don't know how else to put it. That thing that you can do through the lows and highs, I mean, this is it for me. I have a much better grasp of this uh, and who I am and my voice as an artist. And so, where do we go from here? What's next? What's the plan? Long story short, I have no idea. I say that jokingly, but like truly, I don't know. I can't tell you if I'm gonna switch art styles. I can't tell you what's gonna happen. Uh, I can't tell you anything like that. Like, 
I cannot predict the future. However, the only thing that I do know for certain and that I feel confident speaking on is that we're gonna keep going. It is, this is gonna sound cliche and Pinterest bored as hell, but I cannot imagine a day without art. I genuinely think that it is easier for my mind to comprehend a very frustrating day filled with art block and creativity and still make something, still scribble something, uh, than it would be to just not do art. Uh, and that is saying something, because <laughs> it can get really frustrating. Um, for physical goals, um, I don't want to jinx anything, but like, I would love to develop more of these characters. I feel like this is the first art style that really feels like me and feels unique and feels like it's something tangible and not just a copy of something else. And so I want to develop that. I want to work on the lower body, <laughs> try to figure that out uh, and how it would work in my universe of things. Give them some more personality, try to figure something out in that respect. Maybe make them talk, uh, text bubbles. It'd be interesting some maybe do a couple comics i don't know my earliest dream of like like hey what do you want to be when you grow up was a cartoonist actually um so yeah we're just gonna keep going um you know it's a weird thing i would not have been able to answer the question accurately five years ago of where do you see yourself in five years and so who the fuck am i to kind of try to answer that now where do you see yourself in five years uh, i don't know maybe on a planet uh, that isn't underwater and on fire at the same time maybe that's a good place to start but like i don't know you know it's, it's really hard to predict anything especially nowadays yeah we're just gonna really keep going keep pranking it out every single day and see if we can't make this happen even better goals on social media i think it's reasonable given our current following on tiktok Eventually, by the end of the year, if things pick back up again, hit 100,000 followers. I don't know what I'll do if I hit that, but I set a goal in 2020 uh, to, with with no end date in mind, of hitting 50,000 followers, um, and we're really close to that. So I think that is my current goal. Um, but I think we can do it. I think we can do that. And so. Wrapping this video up finally. Hopefully it hasn't been too long of a video. If you stuck through this entire thing, thank you. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? Um, anyways, uh, you know, thank you so much. I really appreciate every single person that has been with me on this journey. It has truly changed my life. Thank you to my family and friends for supporting me physically uh, and emotionally through all of this. Literally, family for enabling me to do literally all of this. And every single one of my art teachers, instructors, professors, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> everyone who has taught me art along the way, you are the technical backbone of this stuff. Yes, I could have taught myself a lot independently, but having an amazing art program in my schools and education is irreplaceable. Everyone from the original high school art squad, you know, Mango, Weezer, Gus, um, those words in that order will only make sense <laughs> to a select few people that watch this video. Um, but if you know, you know, and if you are, you are. And on that, I actually want to share one more thing. This is a sketchbook, a really important sketchbook to me. Uh, this was, I believe, even before my daily drawing challenge. I think it was at the beginning, like 2013, 2014, something along those lines. I can't remember the exact date. However, contained in this little moleskin uh, book is a quote that has stuck with me for all this time. At some point at the beginning of the class, we were writing down motivational quotes. Uh, I don't know if uh, you did this for all of your classes. I think, it, I think it was just meant for a little icebreaker, right? But this has been the mentality of the past five years in terms of like motto. So I kind of freestyled it. I didn't write it down word for word. Uh, but what I wrote down was, you just gotta get through that, okay? Uh, and that's from Ira Glass, but the original quote I think is something like, you. it's part of a longer interview thing, 
Uh, but it's, you just got to fight your way through that. I don't know if there's the okay in there. Um, <laughs> and it's talking about the creative process and all that kind of stuff. I don't think that that quote was meant to be like super like impactful and inspirational, but like it was like through all the ups and downs, like I kept that in mind. Like you got to fight through with that. Like you got to keep going. It's not going to be like perfect every single time there's going to be mess ups there's going to be highs lows left and rights and roller coaster loops and whatever consistency dedication showing up weezer thank you for that quote and everyone else from the original art squad i am more grateful than you know or that i could ever put into words and uh college uh, art classes, amazing uh, set of instructors and teachers, everything from graphic design to uh, graphic design. <laughs> my, my degree is uh, graphic arts, so um, I mean, super, super cool, dedicated, amazingly passionate people. If you're watching this, you know who you are as well. And last but not least, every single one of you, my TikTok family, Instagram family. If you're, if you found me through anything else, I'm surprised. Hey, Twitter. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, I digress. But you are also the meat of all this, right? I don't know if I would be doing this or would have made it as long as I did if I didn't have every single one of you uh, constantly hyping me up in my comment sections, showing love on my random weird scribbles and and sticking with me through all this hey this is editing bobby the audio in the next part somehow mysteriously messed up i don't know what happened to it but i don't think you want to hear any of this and of course i don't know what kind of deep fried bullshit that is but whatever it is it's not good so uh for the next couple of clips that you'll see i switch to my phone's onboard camera microphone which isn't the best but it's better than that uh, and so that's all i wanted to chime in and say it's gonna fix itself eventually uh, for now though my phone's audio is what you have to deal with thank you so 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 much literally making like my dreams uh happen and enabling me to do more weird shit <laughs> and and more and just more incredible stuff so that being said i hope you had a good new year's or new year's eve uh staying safe and let's hope for a good 2022 and all i will say on that is hopefully it's 2022 and not 2020 two i would say let's just kind of like sneak in quietly to the new year but i said that last year at the start of 2021 and here we are still again like what the f so i'm just gonna let clock roll keep making art and we will take it as it comes i think that's the best approach don't know how to start a video like this don't know how to end a video like this hey <laughs> so weird i mean it's it just feels weird to say like okay cool Bye to like a uh, five year milestone, but like you kind of just have to. Yeah. 2022 and beyond. <sighs> Let's do it. <sighs> All right. Let's do it. <laughs>